We do believe at UNESCO and I personally am very much committed uh, to girls' education and uh, women's empowerment. Um, I do believe in the first place that uh, education is one of the best investments uh, uh, in order to achieve sustainability in any development, but particularly girls. Because in many parts of the world, uh, girls are uh, a synonym uh, with poverty. In the rural areas, uh, girls are the marginalized uh, communities. In the communities, uh, there are still a lot of stereotypes and be po because poverty has sometimes a uh, woman's face. Uh, investing in girls' education, and uh, we have uh, a lot of data, a lot of research uh, in this particular area, improves uh, communities' uh, standard of living, uh, uh, eradicates uh, poverty, has a particularly uh, important and positive impact on health. We know that uh, uh, educated uh, women that uh, have passed through primary education are caring better for their children, for their families, uh, and also for the environment. Uh, investing in girls' education uh, uh, is uh, also one of the main, uh, I would say, objectives of Education for All, which is the second millennium uh, development goal. And uh, uh, without achieving gender parity in primary education, uh, and also moving to the secondary education, we, can, uh, we cannot uh, achieve also uh, what nowadays is considered uh, one of the objectives of the international community, to eradicate extreme poverty by the year 2030. And why we speak now about girls' education? Because still inequalities are there. Only 58% of the countries have achieved gender parity in primary education, and only 38% gender parity in secondary education. When girls are in school, and our appeal is, let's keep girls in school. Uh, they marry late, they get pregnant late, they're, when they're in school, they're uh, much more protected uh, in order, uh, if not to, to uh, get contaminated with some diseases, and uh, they're less also uh, uh, protected, uh, I would say, protected against violence. Keeping girls in school after primary education is the best investment in our development. I believe that uh, in terms of, uh, of education, um, uh, it's, it's a value in any society. Uh, education is, uh, uh, I would say, also a cultural value in many societies. Although we know that uh, stereotypes uh, sometimes uh, uh, put uh, uh, girls and marginalized also populations in, in disadvantage, um, we, we believe that uh, uh, if we uh, 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 unite uh, around education, uh, religious leaders, uh, uh, traditional leaders in many communities, uh, of course having a very focused uh, public policies and, uh, and government commitments uh, and make an education a true value for families, uh, we will then achieve also uh, sustainability in all our uh, development efforts. Uh, uh, we, we don't believe that uh, uh, there is uh, a, a just a position between cultural values and educational values. I, we do believe that if we put it right, uh, if we uh, uh, unite around uh, this idea of education being one of the best investment for having healthy families, for having healthy communities, for having also, uh, I would say, a better living, uh, education is a better living also for these communities and these families, then uh, we can convince also uh, everybody and unite around achieving this important goal of access to quality education and lifelong learning for all. I think the strategy to uh, get uh, children into school or uh, on one side, uh, uh, and we have already done it, uh, uh, it is uh, to put education on the uh, global political agenda uh, in the United Nations. And we have now the uh, Education First initiative of the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, who is the first one to put education uh, with such a commitment and such a responsibility on the agenda of the United Nations. We have to have in the post-2015 agenda on sustain sustainable development we have to have 
a one very strong goal, sustainable goal, which is uh, achieving an free access to quality education and lifelong learning for all. And then, of course, we have to have a very strong commitment of governments, of the civil society, of the private sector also, to reach the marginalized. We cannot continue business as usual. Because if we want to eradicate extreme poverty, if we have to move with the agenda of sustainability, if we want to tackle the problems of climate change, if we want also to, uh, in some cases also, shift the paradigm of development to add, uh, I would say, a developmental aspect to all the issues about uh, uh, economic development, to have the three legs of uh, sustainable development, the economic, the social and the environmental, we cannot do that separately from education. So I believe if we integrate education in these strategies of sustainable development, then we will be successful. I think the uh, teaching uh, and learning is shifting. Nowadays we speak uh, not just about education, we are speaking about learning. And this shift in our thinking about uh, learning uh, is very much linked also to the new technologies. Uh, it's very much linked to uh, a new, a very different uh, environment that we are living through, where there is a, uh, a broad access to information through the new communication technologies, which gives a lot of opportunity also for high quality of teaching and of learning. So on one side, we have to bridge the digital divide this is the question about uh, access to uh, online uh, information. It is about the broadband. We're working uh, there through the Broadband Commission in order to promote broadband and connectivity in those parts of the world where still we see this digital divide which is preventing uh, many communities and, and people and young people and others from this access. On the other side, we have to admit that uh, the, the new technology, the technologies uh, overall, uh, it's not a name in itself. It is a means to achieving uh, uh, this learning. And it is about also the content. It is about what kind of, uh, of, of global citizens we, we want to, to create nowadays through the process of schooling and learning. And this is about values. Uh, this is about uh, uh, understanding uh, about the others. This is about... Uh, uh, I would say what kind of, uh, of young people come out of schools. We don't want to have uh, out of schools uh, uh, some kind of a robots. We want to have uh, 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 young people who have skills, but also who are culturally literate, young people who understand about the others, young people who, who know what is at stake nowadays, who are uh, um, uh, with values about uh, human rights, about human dignity, uh, about communities uh, and about the others. So uh, we call it, and within the Global um, Education First Initiative, uh, we have put the third main objective of this initiative, uh, uh, global citizenship, education for global citizenship. And I think uh, uh, this is a, a time to speak about it. It is about education for sustainable development. We are having a major uh, global uh, forum uh, later this year in November in uh, Nagoya in Japan, uh, which is a forum about education for sustainable development. So uh, the stakes are very high nowadays with all the challenges that we have. And we want that the, uh, uh, all this, uh, I would say, uh, global learning and education uh, is about uh, global citizenship and that young people know what is at stake.